Okay, we're back with part three of the step-by-step uh, -step how to build a DIY plywood aquarium. And uh, this is really the episode where things really take off. Uh, we got a lot to do in this episode. We're going to be obviously doing fiberglassing. That is a huge one, and I'm gonna take a lot of time on that because that's actually an area I can show you a lot of things I've learned over the years and help you a lot with uh, getting your fiberglass to be just right the first time. Don't make the mistakes I made in the past. Uh, so I have a lot of recommendations there. Uh, we're gonna do external bracing on the aquarium, just a little bit of vertical bracing, but we're gonna integrate it into the aesthetic of the outside of the aquarium. So it'll be both for aesthetic purposes and for rigidity for vertical bracing. Uh, it doesn't take a whole lot because we're not super tall in this aquarium, but we're gonna do it. We're gonna, you know, not necessarily overkill, but we're gonna make this tank built to last. So we're not gonna cut any corners on anything. And then of course, we're gonna be doing the internal uh, um, wetlands filter. So I'm gonna demonstrate uh, what I'm doing for my internal wetlands filter, but I'll also cover you know, all the details for if you were doing a typical build where your filtration is external. So you'd have bulkheads and plumbing and all that good stuff. Uh, and then of course, we're gonna start uh, doing pond armor. We're gonna start painting this aquarium up. So uh, it's gonna be coming along a lot in this video. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, take a look. Okay, I think what makes the most sense is we'll hold off on the external bracing and we'll come inside the aquarium and we'll first work on uh, filling the little gaps and the little mistake hole we made uh, in the building process. We'll get the wood filler in there uh, and then we'll start on fiberglassing all of these seams. And then after that, we can work on the internal bracing for the or the bracing for the internal wetlands filter. And uh, you can see we got the baffle going on down here, but we'll, I'll explain all of that. And then while that is curing, we'll bounce back out to the outside here, and then we'll start putting in uh, the bracing, as well as basically it's gonna be the aesthetic framing. So it's gonna serve two purposes. It's gonna provide rigidity, vertical rigidity on the walls, and it's gonna make the outside look nice, especially once we trim it out and paint it. Okay, one thing you're gonna notice is you're probably not expecting to see some two by 10 boards. And uh, you also, look when you look down here and you see the baffle is actually made of three pieces of wood that I fiberglass together. So I've already fiberglassed the one side. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna fiberglass the other side. Uh, and the reason I did that is I'm just using up some of my scrap wood because what I need to do is I need to brace off the wall here out to here and then I need to create a baffle for the filter, uh, the internal wetlands filter. Um, in terms of keeping track of the price though for the aquarium, I'm gonna price everything with the materials I would buy and use if I was doing it. I would simply get a half sheet of plywood, not, you know, five glasses much together, and I certainly wouldn't be using two by tens. I'll just use two by fours uh, with the plywood on the inside. So I will absolutely price it accordingly, uh, not <laughs> factoring in my scrap wood. But I just wanna explain why I'm using these materials, but in terms of the price, I'll make sure the price reflects the actual materials you would use if you weren't reusing some of your scrap wood into the build. All right, let me jump in there and get everything prepped and ready for fiberglassing because I wanna take my time with the fiberglassing and I wanna do a lot, I wanna film a lot of the actual fiberglassing. I wanna show you what I'm doing. Uh, it's very important, uh, the devil's in the detail when it comes to fiberglassing and I wanna do the best I can to uh, not only just explain what I'm doing but demonstrate what I'm doing so that uh, you can uh, benefit from experience on there because I know the first time I did it, uh, I had a lot of um, uh, air, like little, uh, pockets in the fiberglass, I guess air pockets, that kind of thing, little bubble, you know, we're tiny, but we're talking bubble size, but I had to sand them out and redo it. So I'm gonna show you how to, how to do it without uh, running into those problems. And also, you know, how to mix the fiberglass resin correctly, my experience with different resins, uh, and some steps I do ahead of time to maximize the work time. Because uh, once you start working with uh, fiberglass resin and fiberglass mat, it's messy, it's, it's sticky, it's, you gotta put gloves on. There's a, it's not easy just to pivot back and forth between activities like you know cutting and screwing something in, just going back and forth. You really need to sort of set up your work area, get everything ready so you have a smooth experience. And, and I'll show that in this video. Okay, so first up, I'm gonna get these materials out of here and I am going to work on uh, the wood filler here and here. Uh, first be sanding and then uh, putting in the wood filler and getting it ready for fiberglass. Okay, before I get started on the prep work for the fiberglass and the fiberglassing itself, I wanna go over the materials I'm gonna use. Uh, so to knock off that a little bit of uh, uh, excess wood we have sticking off where I made a mistake, I'm gonna use the 
palm sander with uh, 60 grit uh, sandpaper. And I'm using 60 grit because I'm not trying to actually smooth the surface or anything. I'm trying to knock off any debris, any wood that's sticking out, anything that's going to cause a bubble or a weakness behind my fiberglass. So not a lot to do there, but this is, I recommend a palm sander for these smaller ones. Uh, in the larger builds, uh, a larger sander is, is more helpful, but uh, not necessary for this. Um, for the wood filler, I'm just using uh, just your regular, basically, <laughs> wood filler. Nothing special there. Again, we're filling just two very small places. This is where it gets back to where I said is, if you take your time on each step, and each step is done correctly, when you get to the next step, there's, there's, there's very few little things to touch up, you know? So you're, you're creating, basically by taking your time as you're connecting the wood together, you're creating a super solid seam that doesn't have a lot of gaps. Now we have one little gap and one little imperfection, but the rest of it is no gaps, no imperfections. And we've made our job a lot easier by taking our time and connecting the wood together correctly. And we're gonna do the same thing here. We do our fiberglass work right, we're gonna save ourselves a lot of effort on the next stage when we're painting the, the pond shield, which is super important because that's the stage where everything's gotta be done right, but the waterproofing really needs to be done right. So you wanna have that solid fiberglass behind it uh, that was done well without imperfections. All right, now getting back to the materials. Now here's one where hopefully my experience will save people a lot of, a lot of time and frustration. So I use this uh, true fiberglass resin uh, polyester resin and uh, this, uh, what is it, uh, Grifco <laughs> um, <clears throat> fiberglass, uh, chop, chop matte fiberglass. Now I didn't start there. I originally used, now this is one of those things where I learned from experience and I found my way to these products. I didn't start there. I started with Bondo and uh, in my experience, the Bondo was terrible. I hated it. It actually was so bad that I almost didn't want to build these tanks because I hated the fiberglass. Uh, portion of it so much because the Bondo was so hard to work with, so hard to get the right consistency. It always seemed like you're following the instructions, but it would set up way faster, you know, than what the instructions said. And then there was really no guidance with cutting it for larger builds to get a longer amount of time, working time with the material. It was just terrible. But the thing is, that's all I'd ever used, so I just thought that's what fiberglassing was like. Well, I finally got to the point that I, I, I was like, you know what, let me try something else. I'm being ridiculous by not even trying new things, right? So I went out, I did the research, and I found the, the true uh, resins and, and the Grifco materials, and then I used those on a build, and oh my gosh, it was night and day. It's so much easier to work with, they even not even just the things I described the setting up at the right time and having the right amount of working time but just they're just better like when you're actually just painting on the fiberglass you don't get little bubbles and stuff like with a Bondo everything else is the same I'm doing the same same brushes and everything it just works better and it has made <laughs> building these tanks a lot easier a lot better because I, I, I literally before was thinking like oh maybe I can skip the fiberglass and stage but that's wrong because I really, that's what, re the fiberglass really makes these tanks super solid. And uh, anyone who follows my channel knows I have an annex I'm building right now in the basement. I'm going to be building a whole bunch of big <laughs> wood tanks pretty soon. So uh, it, it's important to be able to have a, 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 a method or, and tools to use it that makes that easier. Otherwise, it would just be, uh, it'd be horrible making those giant tanks. But since I found this, you know, I've been using this since Predator Bay and uh, it's, it's made it so much nicer making the big wood tanks. Okay, so that's my confessional lessons learned on uh, not all products are the same. Uh, this resin is a lot better than the original Bondo resin I used and uh, the chop strand mat is a lot better than the original Bondo mesh uh, mat I used before. Uh, and one other thing is the mesh is good, the fiberglass mesh mat is good for angles and wrapping around things and rounded edges and stuff, but for strength, the chopped strand is much, much stronger. So for what we're doing here, which is making all of the seams uh, very, very strong, you wanna use the chopped strand mat. Uh, and as you notice here, I get the brushes. Get the cheapest possible brushes you can and get them in bulk, get them in these big boxes. I get uh, some two inchers and some four inchers and I get them in bulk and same with the, uh, the wood, you know, the stir sticks. They're super cheap in bulk um, and, you, and you go through them and it's nasty work. You don't want to reuse a brush. You use it a little bit and then when it starts getting nasty, you get rid of it and grab another one. And the same with the plastic gloves. Uh, don't kid yourself, uh, even, with the good, even with good products, fiberglassing is nasty business and you need to be swapping gloves in and out. 
and uh, that's just the reality of it. So uh, get a bunch of cheap plastic gloves, cheap brushes, uh, cheap stir sticks, and of course, uh, unfortunately they're not cheap, but as, as cheap as you can of these uh, mixing containers, because uh, you're gonna go through a lot of those as well. All right, the other thing you probably noticed is I have a bunch of fiberglass that is already cut and laying around. So what it is, is it's cut for the various areas. This is the back corner there. This is already measured and cut for this. These in the back are for the bottom and the bottom in the front. And then the same thing over here, these are cut for the verticals up there. So uh, it's one of those things I was explaining earlier in the video is you don't want to cut a little bit of fiberglass, start working on it, get, you know, start using the brush and the fiberglass, the resin, get it all over you. And then think you're just going to stop, take the gloves off, cut another piece of fiberglass, start working on the next session. Cause while you've made up a big batch of the resin, you know, it's hardening. Uh, you have a time, you're on a schedule, you don't want to rush, you don't want to be taking the gloves on and off, where do you put the brush, you know, it just becomes a mess. So cut all of your fiberglass mat first, get it all positioned, ready to go, so that when you do start doing the fiberglass, you just work on a piece, grab the next piece, next piece, next piece. And uh, I even did the same thing over here with the baffle that I'm working on. So I've already fiberglassed the one side, and I have the other fiberglass mat already cut, ready to go for this side. Uh, and while I'm here, you see this nasty stuff hanging off here. That's another thing is don't worry about that while you're fiberglassing. Worry about doing the fiberglass and correct and then come back with a Dremel or other, you know, uh, jigsaw or something and cut off all the excess. It's really easy to cut it off and get a nice clean edge. Uh, don't worry about that while you're fiberglassing. Worry about getting uh, a smooth application of fiberglass with no bubbles behind it. Uh, that's, that's the key thing. Okay, let's do some sanding. Okay, the uh, wood filling is done. The, the two spots have been corrected and uh, sanded. And I've gone ahead and used the uh, vacuum to clean out all around the edge. And uh, everything is, I'm gonna basically, all the fiberglass is positioned. I'm gonna take this stuff out of my work area. I'm gonna mix up a batch of resin. And then we're gonna go ahead and put fiberglass on the other side of the baffle. And we're gonna do all of the seams of the aquarium. So another thing I like about the uh, True Composites uh, fiberglass resin is we have a nice little chart on the side here which shows you how much hardener to use with how much uh, resin. So in our case, uh, we have a two quart mixing cup here, but I don't want to, I think I'm going to use probably a quart and a half to two quarts, but I don't want to put pressure on myself to have to do it all at one time. Uh, if I do one quart, uh, I have plenty of time to work with that before it sets up hardening wise, no problem. Could I maybe get it done two quarts? Possibly, but there's no reason to rush it. What end up happening is at the very bottom, we'll just have a tiny little bit of resin left over that'll over harden, but we can put and do another mix right on top of that and it's not gonna affect that at all. So uh, we're gonna take our nice little chart here and we're gonna take our two ounces of uh, hardener, resin hardener right here, which has a nice little chart on the side. And we're gonna go ahead and put uh, 32 ounces of resin in here and then a third of an ounce of hardener. And then we're gonna do a bunch of stirring, get the gloves on. Well, actually, we're gonna not start with the brush. We're actually gonna start over here on the baffle with the roller. We'll get that done, and then we'll hop in the aquarium and uh, we'll start doing all the seams. So I'll give you a little bit of footage of uh, this over here, and then we'll do the seams as well. Okay, it's important to have the gloves on, and uh, once you have the mixture all stirred up, so you wanna get it stirred really well, because it is a chemical hardening process. So the resin hardener needs to be thoroughly mixed into the resin so that all of it will cure. Because uh, if you don't, it'll never cure. <laughs> so it's not something that given extra time, it'll, you know, not like paint will dry. It has to cure. So you have to get the right mixture and you have to get it stirred well. Uh, okay, so we have that. And the re part of the reason we made so much is because uh, fiberglassing uh, these three boards together, we're gonna do sort of a pour method. So we're gonna be using quite a bit of resin on here. There we go. And we're gonna be using the roller. So the two things we're trying, oh, before I go any further, uh, you need to do this in a very, very well ventilated area. Uh, if I can, anytime I can, I do fiberglassing outside uh, if possible. Um, but if not, you have to make sure you use plenty of fans and uh, open up all the doors. And if you have pets, put them somewhere else. Don't let them hang around you uh, while you're doing this because usually they're a lot smaller than a person and uh, they can be 
uh, the exposure to it is, is more dangerous to them. So the first 20 minutes or so before this sets up, uh, it is uh, it does have some toxicity to it, so you don't want to be breathing it in. You want plenty of fresh air. All right, so I'm going to get my hands free, so I'm going to stop now, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, finish coating all of this. Oh, sorry, before I go, <laughs> we need to do two things. We need to saturate the material, and we need to make sure that we get all of... Uh, the bumps are imperfection out of it. So we want to have it flat, but fully saturated, the, the, the cloth. Okay, if you're just seeing me show the end product, you didn't see me rolling this on, that's because my camera kind of overheated uh, in the middle of filming that. And unfortunately, when you're doing this kind of work, uh, you got to keep going. Uh, you just can't stop in the middle. But this is um, <clears throat> the, the, the product rolled out. This took about 28 ounces, uh, you know, using it liberally to make sure that I uh, have solid um, coverage. So what I talked about was you need to do this ideally outside if you can, but you have to do it inside. Uh, get any small pets out of the area. So in my case, I lock them in a bedroom upstairs. While I do this, I have doors and windows open, fans running. So for about the first 20 minutes while this is curing, uh, it, it, it does have toxicity to it. So you don't want to be inhaling it. You want plenty of fresh air, plenty of air movement. Uh, the other thing is, is when the mat was on here, I did a pour, I poured out about 28 ounces of uh, resin mixed with hardener, and then I used the roller, and I, you basically what you're doing is you're just saturating the matte material with uh, the liquid. You can't push down hard to move it, you'll just tear the, uh, the, resin, uh, the uh, fiberglass mat, and um, so you, you gotta have pretty good coverage with your pores, and you're just spreading it out, you can't push it out. And if you have like a bubble, um, I had an area over here where there was too much material. You pull a little bit of the material off, rip it off, and then smooth it out. Uh, you, 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 can't, you can't push down really hard and try to get it out. You know, it's, uh, there's only so much pressure you can put on it without uh, disturbing the cloth and tearing it up. So, so that's ready. That's drying or curing. And then we'll come back and we'll trim off all the sides. And this will be the baffle for our internal filtration. So now, what we're gonna do is this is the resin we have left over. We mixed 32 ounces and what are we down to there? Uh, it looks like 12, so um, didn't use quite as much as I said, but that's what we have left. And we're gonna go ahead and work on uh, a back seam over there. We're gonna switch uh, from the roller that I was using here. So you can see here, I was using the roller to roll this out and get all the material nice and saturated and you can see if I go hard it just pulls on the material you have to go slow and steady can't go fast and just can't push extra hard to make up for anything so now we're going to switch to the brush over here and we're going to work on that back seam over there okay so I have pre-cut two strands of a uh, chopped mat, one for this inside seam here in the front and one for this one in the back. So we're gonna go ahead and work on the one in the back. So what we wanna do first, is we wanna get your brush nice and saturated in resin and we're gonna permeate the wood behind where the mat is gonna go with resin. So we wanna get that all nice and covered and then we will do the same for the other side. Uh, please bear with me, this is not the easiest thing to do and film at the same time, but uh, I think it's important to show you exactly how this works. Okay, so behind where the, the mat is gonna go, we have both sides all nice and covered with resin. Now, I'm gonna put the camera down for one second. Okay, what I did is I used one hand to hold the cloth and I used the other one to push the brush and just kind of get it roughed into place. So now I'm gonna get a whole bunch of resin on there, get it all nice and saturated and then straighten it out. So what I'm doing here is I'm getting the brush nice and saturated in resin and I'm just working in the corner and then working out from the corner. Again, I'm not pushing or dragging, I'm just trying to saturate the material. So I wanna get just a lot of resin in here and I want to start with the middle and squish it in there nice and good and it is absolutely okay that it's running down. We are going to grab that material as we work our way down and we're going to work it into the fiberglass mat just by 
more or less pushing it in. I'm just dampening it, you know, just pushing down, saturating the material. So saturating the material is what's gonna flatten the material and smooth it out. So you see here, there's a, a little bump and you don't wanna drag it, you just wanna keep mushing down till it's fully saturated and it'll flatten out. So let's work down to the bottom here. And one thing I can tell from here is that the material in the mixer container is starting to harden. So we are already, you know, it is not hardened yet, it's still usable, but we're nearing that area where if we did a double dose, a double batch, it would be too much. So, again, um, if I wasn't filming any of that sort of thing, I can go faster and I can get away with it. For, from my experience though, it's a little bit rushed. So let me put the camera down so I can work on this bottom corner and get this just right. Okay, I had to go and just work on that and not film, but I just want to sort of show you, I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but it gets a little bit of a, a thicker consistency to it when it's getting close to being all used up, uh, the resin. So something to look for. And again, you're not painting it on, you're saturating the cloth, the material. So it's more of a, a tamping, a pushing down a tamping and looking for any, any raised spots in the material or any parts of the material that aren't saturated, fully saturated. And you can tell that because you'd see white. You'd see the white material, or I don't know if it'll come up on camera, but you would see a raised up area if it wasn't fully saturated. So we were looking good there. And I did notice one area down here at the bottom where I need to put some extra fiberglass there for a little bit of a imperfection in the wood. So we'll take care of that. And then if you look at the back, you can see there's no raised areas, no white areas. It's all set. It's all saturated with material. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and use up the rest of the material and just paint it on the wood because resin, fiberglass resin itself is a a uh, waterproofing. Um, so we're just gonna go ahead and use it so it doesn't go bad. Okay, now here's our completed fiberglass work. Uh, you can see every single seam of the aquarium has been fiberglassed. Uh, our our mistake is well covered up there. It's filled in and covered over with fiberglass. And you can see in each corner, there's overlapping. So the weakest part is that bottom corner. And in each one of those, it's basically triple overlapped. You have uh, the fiberglass uh, mat coming down, coming across, and then coming across this way. So each one layers. So that corner ends up getting triple the strength and that is the weakest point of the aquarium. Uh, as you can see over here, all the seams are looking good. So we have no uh, discoloration, we have no white coloration of uh, fiberglass mat that didn't get fully impregnated with resin. And uh, I've touched it all, which it's all cured evenly, which is good. Not something I can really show on camera, but it is all cured and hardened. And uh, the other thing is you wanna take your, your fingers and you want to run along those seams and you're just trying to feel for any imperfections, any bubbles or, or soft spots, anything like that. And I've, I've done those tests as well and uh, everything is good. Uh, as well as we finished fiberglassing both sides of the baffle that's going to go in between the filtration section and the aquarium section. Uh, I, you can see I've taken the uh, Dremel and cut off the big pieces of excess uh, mat, but now it's time to take the the hand sander and just get those edges nice and clean uh, and get this ready for installation in the tank. So if you were not doing internal filtration um, and you were just going to have one big piece of glass on the front, which is pretty standard, you have uh, you put bulkheads in the back, you have an external filter probably underneath the sump, uh, you'd be ready for pond armor, pond shield right now, which is painting on the two-part epoxy waterproofer. Um, because we're doing an internal wetlands filter for me what we're going to do now is we're going to build this section out uh, from the side and we're going to build the first baffle out and then we're going to so we're going to get this structure built in here so this will be all covered and then we'll put in the baffle and the reason we do half of the structure first and then the baffle is such that we can drill through to connect the baffle we'll drill through on the back 
Uh, then we'll put the second piece of structure, which will just completely frame that out. And then there's a little more fiberglass work to do because we're gonna have the inside, we're gonna fiberglass where that baffle is uh, and uh, both to the front, to the bottom on both sides of the baffle and then the back on both sides of the baffle. So we have that uh, rigidly installed in the aquarium. Now there is gonna be water on both sides. There's not gonna be a ton of pressure on it, but we still don't want it to move whatsoever because uh, it is a uh, structure that the pond shield is going to be painted to. So uh, just like any other part of the structure, you can't have any flex or movement in it because uh, that will undermine the waterproofing. So once we install the baffle, you'll see uh, uh, basically what I'm talking about and we will get it all in place and make sure it is super rigid. All right, so putting in that baffle is a little bit nerve wracking because you're screwing into uh, three quarters of an inch uh, uh, thickness of a uh, board here and since it's already fiberglass and everything if you mess up <laughs> you have to fix that both uh, with the fill of the fiberglass so uh, thankfully we didn't uh, but yeah I definitely took my time did a lot of measuring and a lot of making sure that this is uh, straight vertically uh, so what have we done here we put in an extra brace right here on the side we built it out a little bit and again just so I could use the scrap 2x10 I had um, and I'm gonna put the other piece right here to fill it in just for the outside trim. But you can see I needed to do the first piece in first so I could screw into the side of the baffle here. Uh, again, this, if you were going to do a same build as this, but you didn't have the scrap lumber, you could just build the two by four frame out. And then on the end, you just have a double two by four turn sideways, you know? And uh, on the inside, uh, so in my case, well, let me take you around and show you. So in my case, the 2x10 and the 2x4 that we built out, it forms the structure on the inside uh, for the fiberglass. So this whole piece will get fiberglassed, the corner will get fiberglassed, the bottom edge of the uh, bath will get fiberglassed on both sides. And then of course, over here, the backside will get fiberglassed on the inside and the outside, as well as uh, the top. There's actually gonna be quite a bit uh, probably I'll do probably do two layers of fiberglass where I'm going to wrap the fiberglass over the top of the baffle because the water is going to be spilling over in this scenario so it's going to have friction over it so I want to make sure that is nice and strong so it'll get uh, quite a bit of fiberglass treatment because the edge of the plywood is obviously the weaker part so uh, I'll go ahead and screw in that last board and uh, as you can tell I have quite a bit of fiberglassing work to do in a relatively tight area so not going to be that fun uh, but I think it's going to be worth it when it's all done yeah, because uh, anything that doesn't leak water well that's worth it when it's all done all right let me get back to work okay for me there's been a little bit of gap in the build because I ran out of fiberglass resin uh, I had to order it online because there was nothing local except for the uh, crappy stuff that I don't like so uh, I had to wait but it is here and I went and picked up some more mixing uh, containers and everything so it's always good to have uh, you can see I've cut up a whole bunch of fiberglass mat. It's all measured for the different sections I'm going to be doing. But there's one thing I want to mention is I think I misspoke in the last segment that the water would, that would be fiberglass in the top of the baffle because the water would be rolling over it. The water won't be rolling over it. There'll be uh, bulkheads. The water will be coming through the top, not over. But I still want to fiberglass the top of the uh, board because it is uh, simply the, the, yeah, the exposed plies. That's not a good surface to uh, waterproof. And there is going to be quite a bit of water there in the event there's ever a backup uh, in the main pathway the water is supposed to take. It is going to come over that. So I do account for that in the build as well. So that is going to happen. And there's one other thing. There's one other mistake. So we knew we made a mistake in the back and I had to fill that. That was really easy. Not a big deal. Uh, that was when we were screwing up from the bottom. We came out of the wood a little bit. Easy to fix. Well, we made another mistake. So this baffle here is supposed to be a little further back. I was supposed to leave room for the inside frame of the glass and so I didn't. It, the, the baffle came all the way to the edge. Now I'm looking inside and I'm kind of thinking it's probably all for the best because I don't think I would have enough room to really do the fiberglassing properly if it were three inches further back as well as I was measuring the some of the components I'm using for the internal filter and they wouldn't have fit either without a lot of modification so this actually works better for, for the tank as a whole. Um, the only difference for me is I was going to reuse a piece of glass I already had here. Now I'm gonna to have to get a, a custom one, you know, cut to fit this exact space. And uh, I am losing you know, a few inches 
of a front window, but uh, all in all, I decided to go with the compromise here rather than, than pull this back out, uh, work in that tight space and have to rejig everything inside the filter, uh, wetlands filter there. So what I did, again, just getting rid of some scrap, screwed in a two by four here to create a ledge on the inside here where the, uh, the glass panel can butt up against. And of course, I'm gonna fiberglass that so that that seam will go away. Uh, so before all the sides of the bath will be fiberglassed and then the inside uh, where we've built out the structure will get fiberglass as well. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and jump in on that. All right, my uh, favorite part is finally done. We've got all the seams done on the uh, baffle there and on the front and of course, and of course all of the inside is all done as well so we are all set there uh, obviously a little bit of cleanup to do with some excess fibers and stuff like that but that is to be expected so uh, while that cures i'm going to go ahead and jump out here on the outside of the aquarium and we'll start doing the trim so you see i got one piece on here and we're going to have a bottom piece and then we're going to have the vertical pieces but i'll show you how i take this one by four and i screw and glue it onto here and we we stiffen we give rigidity uh to the vertical uh sides of the aquarium so that when the two-part epoxy is in there there's no flexing and as well as we create an outside trim that will ultimately be part of the uh, decor of the aquarium uh so you can see here i'm i'm actually sinking the screws down into the wood a little bit because i'm going to be filling that and uh painting over it so sanding and painting so uh and normally if i were doing like actually just building you know, cabinetry or furniture or something like that, I would, you know, use a nail gun and, and it would be a lot prettier, but we want the strength here. So we actually want these little screws. I got little short screws that will hold the trim boards into here without going through into the aquarium. And uh, we're doing that plus the glue just for rigidity. Um, so it makes it a little messier for, you know, countersinking a screw compared to a nail and filling, but uh, it can be done. And uh, obviously the strength is more important than the aesthetics. Hopefully, uh, People are looking at what's going on inside the aquarium and not the side of the aquarium once I'm done. So all that gets fully cured and hardened, we'll go ahead and work on the trim on the side. So we're going ahead and putting the Gorilla Glue on there and then we're using these short little construction screws. So, so step one, we put the glue on the back, we get the board in place and uh, we go ahead and get it clamped on. So obviously it's gonna take two hands to do this, but to give you the idea, we have the cross pieces across the top and the bottom and then we're gonna have these vertical pieces coming down, going across the aquarium. It'll be four vertical pieces going down and then a cross piece on the bottom and the top. So let me go ahead and get these glued and screwed on and I'll show you the end result. And then we're just gonna do that all the way around the whole aquarium. So there's the finished product. So that is the, the sides and the back and the other side of the aquarium all have these vertical braces in now, uh, which are also serving as uh, our aesthetics. Uh, we're gonna fill in all those screw holes and it's gonna be painted gloss white to match all the other uh, stands in the fish basement and everything. Uh, as far as the bottom, I think I'm gonna have to do some doors down there. There's a lot of storage space under there uh, since we don't have a sump down there. So I certainly don't wanna waste that by just framing, you know, like uh, covering it all. So <clears throat> we'll do something down there, uh, something nice, but it will match this up here. So that brings us to the end of part three because we're done with fiberglassing. Uh, we've built the aquarium. We've added the framework for the uh, wetlands filter over here. Uh, we've done all the fiberglassing. We are ready to move on to uh, two-part epoxy waterproofing. That's a huge deal because uh, you're almost at the end with that. Yeah, so like I was saying, uh, once you do the uh, waterproofing, you're pretty close to the end, and we really are. Uh, we have the waterproofing to go, uh, we have the glass install, and like I mentioned earlier in this video, <laughs> I, I'm not going to be able to reuse the piece I was going to use because, uh, yeah, I, I made a little miscalculation there. I'm going to have a better wetlands filter, but it's going to cost me some money because I'm going to have to buy a piece of glass, and you're going to see that that is the... the, the uh, the financial piece of this puzzle that really is like, wow, the glass these days is quite expensive. Uh, literally in the past, it would have been somewhere between a third and a half of what it's gonna cost me for this piece of glass now. It is brutal, but you will see that, except for the glass, the rest of the build is extremely economical and, and it gives you the ability to have a custom 
aquarium. So uh, if the world ever gets back to the way it used to be and the glass prices come down, then these DIY tanks, they get very, very cost effective again. But again, even with the glass being expensive, if you're gonna go buy a glass aquarium, they're equally expensive because they're made of glass, right? So what are you gonna do? Um, so anyway, any rate, the glass is on order. I already have the epoxy. I'm gonna start on that. And uh, I'm gonna basically start building out the wetlands filter. So uh, yeah, episode four, uh, part four of this, we're gonna, this, this build's gonna be done. So uh, it's gonna get done in part four. We're gonna do the epoxy coating. You're gonna see more work done on the uh, wetlands filter. You're gonna see the glass install, which is a big one, showing you how to do that. Actually, the epoxy is a big one too, showing you how to do that. And we're gonna do the bracing up top. And I'm gonna do a little bit of custom bracing because I wanna do some emergent growth plants and I wanna create some structure up there uh, to support those plants uh, as they'll fit in with the aquascape. Uh, in terms of how the tank is gonna be scaped and turned on and everything, that'll be a premiere video. So once the, the tank is fully built and I aquascape it and stock it and everything, there'll be a little delay because the tank has to mature, has to, uh, even though I'll, I'll in introduce uh, cycle meeting into the aquarium it takes a little time i don't want to rush that kind of thing you have the health of the of the livestock at that point and uh it doesn't make any sense to rush it anyways so i won't rush that but there will be a premiere and you'll see this up and running with its wetland filter and uh fish, fishy inhabitants so uh exciting stuff we're almost at the end uh so part four is next and uh in part four we take it all the way home thanks for watching